Hi and welcome to Another Gamers. Today we're going to have a look at the Indie Royale Graduation Bundle. Now this is a collection of six games. Details about each of the games can be found in the description below. And also we'll be doing uh, further recordings for each of the games later. But for now, let's get started on the games themselves. Now there are six games in total in this bundle. The Void, Dead Pixels, The Ship, 1000 Amps, Laser Cat, and Air Mech. Now what we're going to do is going to start off with Dead Pixels. Now Dead Pixels is a pixel based side scrolling zombie shooting game. Now the control system for this is relatively simple. Simple WASD movement, you've got left mouse button and right mouse button. You also use one or two other keys to interact with your inventory. Now the basic premise of the game is you need to survive, get from basically one side of the town to the other side of the town, managing to get past numerous zombies which come in your way. Now there is a small RPG element to this and the fact that you can go into some of the buildings and search. You can sometimes come across traders and you'll be able to buy and sell equipment. But also this is part where the RPG elements come in and you'll be able to improve your stats by selling off your things and using the money you've accrued in order to buy upgrades say to health, your combat abilities and other things like that. Now there are a few different modes and you can also play this game multiplayer. Now unfortunately even though I'm quite a fan of zombie games even just after sort of like 10 minutes of playing I did find that some elements were starting to become a bit repetitive and it was starting to get tiring quickly. However, with the variety in the environments that it was coming up with and of course the different modes and the ability to play multiplayer, there was some potential for this potentially lasting for a little while. Now given the cost of this as part of the bundle, I wouldn't worry too much about the length of this game. Now the music quality and the audio are very good. The graphical style is very very good it's um, very well done it gives you the kind of a celluloid feel including the scratches on film and little hairs that appeared so it all polishes out to do create a quite a well-rounded game now this is definitely t worth taking a look at I don't know if it'll be the longest or la longest lasting game in a bundle probably not considering such candidates as the void or air mech but this is definitely worth a good look. Okay, the next game we're going to have a look at is The Ship. Now The Ship is quite a simple to play, so like FPS style game. Now the premise of this is you're on board a, so like a small area with other passengers. One, of the, one or more of the passengers will be chosen to be a hunter. Now the hunter's job is to go find one of the other passengers and kill them. There are numerous weapons around the game which they can find and pick up and use to kill you. However, there is a few problems getting in their way. If they were to pull out a weapon in the middle of an open area where any of the security guards or members of staff can see them, you'll instantly be spotted and you'll be arrested. Now you might be wondering, okay, if we know this, all the players are just going to stay in the open areas. However, there is a few drawbacks in that area, because each of the players needs to perform certain actions. At times they'll need to eat and drink, which whilst can be in public areas, you might want to go to somewhere more secluded. But they also need to perform actions such as sleep, go to have a shower, and also go to the toilet. This means people who are paying particular attention to their chosen target will be able to stalk them, because at some point these people are going to have to go and fulfil these particular bodily functions and at that time that's when you can strike however just because you're getting ready to strike doesn't mean that there's somebody else not trying to kill you so the whole game becomes a giant set of paranoia as each person's trying to fulfill their own requirements whilst trying to keep away and not get themselves killed by someone else now this is primarily to be played online multiplayer against human components but you can also play so like an arcade mode against computer opponents, whilst not as interesting, it certainly can give you the rights of atmosphere and get used to the game itself. Another game out of our series is 1000 Amps. Now this is a flash based puzzle game. 
uh, you'll f go through this game and through a series of connected rooms and within that room you've got a hidden path. Now as you explore that room by jumping around and falling on top of each of the blocks, it will slowly reveal itself. Some of these blocks are quite important because when you land on them or touch them, they highlight and this creates all like the battery power that you're supposed to get for each of the particular rooms. Should you maximize the battery power in that area, you'll cause the entire room to reveal itself. Now there is some special squares where you can land on and reveal it. Also, there's different areas in this where you can only go through a certain section in one direction. And also, you can't reach some sections until you've completed another because one of the things is about increasing this battery power is also increases your ability to jump. So you maneuver through this environment, going down across rooms, up again, backtracking to where you've been, getting into small circular patterns in order to try and complete the entire room. It's, this can be quite interesting. Some of the earlier levels are relatively simple and some of the later ones though if you make a mistake can be quite frustrating as you have to backtrack some considerable distance to get back to where you were. However besides this the sounds and the music in this game is, fulfill the atmosphere quite well. They blend in very well. And you also realise that as you highlighted these different squares, they perform a little note, which once you complete the squares, it goes through a little musical sequence. So each of the rooms also feel connected in that sense, and you also get an audio impression of how well you're actually doing in that room. So this game by itself is quite an interesting little puzzle game. Once you've done it, though, you will probably won't need to come back to it ever again. There's not really much room for replayability. However, as again, as part of the bundle, this is definitely worth taking a look at. Now, Laser Cat is a, another 2D platform game. It's got a little bit of a cheesy story, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's got very cute music. And it performs in many ways as a classical platformer game. And as a classical platformer game, I mean, you go through different areas and you've got hazards that you need to avoid, such as enemies moving up and down, platforms that move left to right, allowing you to get traverse an area which if you touch you are to die. There's also various quick time, so like reaction based events that you need to do to, in order to get through to some of the level, different parts of the level. Uh, overall this game is very well polished. You got the nice cute music, there's uh, one of the bits is you've also got a riddle section in there as well which seemed quite unusual but it was interesting to see I don't know what happens if you actually get the questions wrong uh, I didn't play too much of it but it was interesting to see it nonetheless now this game I think once you start getting into it you'll either find it's a game that you'll get very frustrated with or you'll just enjoy the all overall atmosphere and really get stuck into it the next game on the list is Air Mech. Now this is a very fast paced game. You find some similarities but only vaguely to an RTS game. In that sense you've got two opposing bases and you need to try and capture different supporting structures and destroy the main base. Now most your vehicles and weapons in this don't move. So once you build them or see that you've got some lying around, they stay where they are. The only exception to this is troops who will move around the battlefield and move towards your opponent. So what you need to do is generally pick up your vehicles and move them along in the game. You've got two forms in which you can do this. You've got the robot, which whilst unable to pick anything up is a very powerful combat piece and you got the plane which is very fast traveling but is limited in what it can attack so as you might see from some of the footage behind you'll see me picking up different of my vehicles and dumping them in front of some of the structures that I want to capture and later on I'd be for instance picking up individual troops and dragging them just in front of the bases because once the troops are inside they're able to secure that base for you and gain control. This means that you've got a forward base of operations so that when you build units you don't have as far to go back in order to grab them and keep events around the battlefield. Now the final game out of this is The Void. Now this is kind of the big game. Now 
I've only managed to have a cursory glance at it, maybe played it for about 20 minutes. And this is a very interesting and I think going to be quite a deep story. Now, the whole basis of this is based around the idea of colour. You seem to be in an area in the void, which is place where everything kind of goes to die before it ends up before it ends up in oblivion the only thing that actually gives life and allows things to live is color you'll find that the use of color through this can influence the environment and the characters themselves and also there's different techniques you can do to spread the color around for those of you who played a kami might recognize some of this elements of this as you use different brush strokes in order to perform different actions some of it might be to give the gift of life or color to other objects and people whilst other might be shield which can protect you from some of the more harmful elements now this game has definitely got a lot of depth to it and it's probably well worth the time and the money to really get stuck into this and find out what this game's all about. Okay, so that is the graduation bundle. Now, for the value, which typically will range between about, in English money, about £2.50 to about £3.20. So for the Americans, we're talking, what, maybe four and a half dollars up to about five and a half dollars six dollars at times this game this bundle of games i definitely think is going to be worth it there's some good individual elements in there so if you like your puzzle game you've got that's 1000 amps if you like your platformer laser cat if you want a fast-paced action game with a bit of shooty shooty you got air march if you want a sort of like an FPS game but which in which you really have to think and plan actually how you do it, not just run around and gun everything down, then of course you've got that's where the ship comes in. If you like your zombie games like I do, there's dead pixels. So in this bundle there's some strong contenders depending on your particular taste and style. So this this bundle is definitely one I would recommend getting. Okay. I hope you've enjoyed. We're going to definitely take a look at each of these games individually and give you a bit more details about this. I'm going to be a little bit delayed on that because I'm busy going and getting a new house tomorrow. So, hope you've enjoyed. See you next time.